Yugi versus Kaiba, the long-awaited duel between these two legendary duelists. Spoilers, Yugi comes out on top. But I wondered, was this the definitive outcome? Could one or two different plays have changed the trajectory of this duel? How about we find out together? So, let's jump into the duel. The duel begins and Yugi goes first. He draws and his opening hand consists of Queen's Knight, Big Shield Gardener, Exchange, Collected Power, Magical Hats and Light Force Sword. Yugi starts by summoning his Queen's Knight into defense. He sets his Light Force Sword face down and ends his turn. Why didn't he summon or even better set his 2600 defense Big Shield Gardener face down? I have no idea. It's Kaiba's turn and he draws. His opening hand consists of Obelisk the Tormentor, X-Head Cannon, Spell Sanctuary, Lullaby of Obedience, Power Balance, and Enemy Controller. Kaiba starts by summoning his X-Head Cannon. He then activates his Spell Sanctuary. Due to its effect, both players add one spell from their deck straight to their hands. Yugi adds Change of Heart, whereas Kaiba adds Soul Exchange. However, that's not all. Now, for as long as this card remains face upon the field, both players can activate spell cards during the opponent's turn, as long as they were set first. This is a weird effect to tack on, because we've already established that during Battle City, if you set a spell card, even if it's a normal spell, you can activate it during your opponent's turn. So I'm not quite sure why Kaiba's playing a card that does this here. It doesn't hurt the duel, so let's move on. Kaiba chooses not to attack. Instead, he sets his enemy controller face down and ends his turn. Why didn't Kaiba destroy Queen's Knight? Well, that's because he's setting up an OTK. He wants Yugi to fill his field so that he can use Soul Exchange that he just added to wipe Yugi's board and then attack the game with Obelisk. In all honesty, this is a fine strategy, but at the end of the day, he should have just attacked. By destroying this one card, Kaiba would have created a ripple effect for the rest of his duel. And while I can't guarantee he would have 100% won by doing this, it would have helped a lot more. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Alpha the Magnet Warrior. Yugi, unable to get over X-Head Cannon, summons Alpha into defense. He sets his change of heart face down and ends his turn. An alternate play that Yugi could have done here was, he could have summoned his Alpha into attack, switch Queen's Knight into attack, activate change of heart, take control of X-Head Cannon, and then attempt to attack with all three for gain. It's a good idea in theory, but had he done this, then Kaiba would have just used his enemy controller to take back his x head cannon, and now Yugi would have had no defenses next turn. So overall, Yugi, well done on not overcommitting. Good play. It's back to Kaiba, and he draws Interdimensional Matter Transporter. With all the pieces in place, Kaiba begins his OTK. He starts by activating Soul Exchange. Now he can use Yugi's monsters currently on the field for his tributes. Realizing Kaiba is about to go for Obelisk, Yugi plays Change of Heart to take control of Kaiba's X-Head Cannon. However, Kaiba plays his enemy controller. By paying a thousand life points, he takes back X-Head. Realizing if he doesn't stop the summon, he will lose the duel, Yugi activates his final face down Light Force Sword. With its effect, he can banish one random card in Kaiba's hand, face down for four turns. With a 25% chance of hitting Obelisk, the play is successful. Obelisk is banished, and Kaiba is no longer able to summon any monsters. Kaiba ends his turn. Yet again, x Cannon Cannon could have destroyed a monster on Yugi's side of the field. Kaiba didn't do that. Why didn't he do that? I have no idea. Should he have? Yes. Misplay Kaiba. It's Yugi's turn, and he draws Life Shaver. Yugi yet again can't make any plays, so he sets his exchange face down and ends his turn. Why didn't Yugi summon his Big Shield Gardener into defense and also set his Life Shaver face down? Which, I'll remind you, Life Shaver, for every turn it's face down on the field, it makes your opponent discard a card for every turn it was set. A very powerful card. And the fact that Yugi has exchange face down, you really don't want a powerful card like this in your hand. It would have been much better on the field. There's no reason why he shouldn't have set it face down. Yugi, now you've misplayed. It's Kaiba's turn and he draws Y Dragon Head. He summons it to the field and activates its effect to equip itself to X Head Cannon. This increases its attack by 400. Kaiba enters his battle phase. He attacks Alpha and it is destroyed. Kaiba then enters his main phase 2 and activates Lullaby of Obedience. Now, by paying 1,000 life points, he can declare the name of a level 8 or higher monster. And if the declared monster is in Yuki's deck, he can add it to his own hand. Kaiba declares Slifer the Sky Dragon. As Kaiba takes Slifer, he notes how deep it was in Yuki's deck, laughing about how Yugi would never have even drew this card in the duel. Hilariously though, after waiting for Kaiba to walk all the way back over to his side of the field, Yugi smiles and says that he and Kaiba think alike. 
he activates exchange. Yugi reveals here that he also had planned to steal Kaiba's Egyptian guard. He was gonna wait for it to come back into his hand from Light Force Sword, activate his exchange straight away and snatch it straight back. However, since Kaiba was nice enough to add Slifer to his hand, he thought, I'll take that one instead. Kaiba now walks back over. Yugi takes Slifer. Kaiba takes Life Shaver. Kaiba ends his turn. I have to reiterate, if Yugi would have set Big Shield Gardener and Life Shaver last turn, the only cards that Kaiba could have picked would basically never have helped him out in this duel. And not only that, Yugi didn't need to use Exchange straight away. Kaiba can't summon Slifer, so why not wait for your turn? And then you can set your Life Shaver face down and maybe just leave the magical hats in your hand and just give him that instead. Oh, and not only that, only that, but also, Yugi gets tunnel vision here. Yugi is so fixated on getting his Slife of the Sky Dragon back, he never even looks at the rest of Kaiba's hand. We know this because Yugi is later shocked to see Kaiba use power balance, something he should have known. In fact, speaking of Kaiba, you're not off the hook either. Why didn't you set your two trap cards face down during your end phase? Had you done this, when Yugi draws during his next turn, you could activate your Life Shaver straight away. This would force Yugi to discard one card. And then you could activate your Power Balance to halve Yugi's hand, leaving him with only two cards and allowing Kaiba to draw two new cards. This play would have absolutely decimated Yugi's resources and bolstered Kaiba's own. So unfortunately Kaiba, misplay to you too. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Soul Rope. With little options, Yugi summons Big Shield Gardener into defense. He sets Soul Rope face down and ends his turn. It's Kaiba's turn and he draws Z Metal Tank. Kaiba starts by setting Interdimensional Matter Transporter face down and then summons Z Metal Tank. He then combines all three of his monsters together to make the Fusion Monster XYZ Dragon Cannon. Kaiba enters his battle phase and attacks Big Shield Gardener. It is destroyed, however Yugi plays his Soul Rope. Since a monster was destroyed, he can pay 1000 life points to special summon any level 4 monster from his deck. He chooses King's Knight, and since King's Knight is summoned, while Queen's Knight is on the field, he is also able to special summon his Jack's Knight. Kaiba ends his turn. Shenanigan and misplay time. First of all, Fusion summoned monsters can't attack the turn they are fusion summoned according to Battle City rules. So Kyber attacking with his fusion summoned monster is technically an illegal play. However, I'm going to give him the benefit of doubt. I'm going to say because he didn't use polymerization to summon his XYZ dragon cannon, because it was contact fused, it bypassed this rule. Okay, I'm giving you a, an off there, Kaiba. There you go. What I am not going to let off is the fact that Yugi has three monsters on his side of the field. He also has Sly for the Sky Dragon in hand that you absolutely know about. Why not use the effect of your XYZ Dragon Cannon, discard some cards, and, you know, just destroy some of his monsters so he can't summon his Sly for next turn? Even better. Let's go back to the start of the turn. Let's not set Interdimensional Mass Transporter face down. Instead, before we even enter our battle phase, let's discard three cards, destroy the back row, a monster, and then another monster. Now, Yugi has absolutely no field at all. You can attack directly, deal 2,800 damage, and then next turn, Yugi can do absolutely nothing. And next turn, for your turn, you'd win the duel. I have seen you do this very play in future episodes, so unfortunately, there's no excuse. Misplay. It's back to Yugi and he draws Pot of Greed. He tributes Queen's Knight, King's Knight, and Jack's Knight to summon Slife of the Sky Dragon. Its attack becomes 3000 since Yugi's hand contains three cards. Yugi attacks, but as he does, Kaiba activates Interdimensional Matter Transporter to banish XYZ until the end of the turn. Since the attack target of a monster was removed due to the anime rulings, Slifer's attack fizzles and no replay occurs. Yugi ends by setting his Pot of Greed face down. As he does, Slifer's attack is reduced and XYZ returns to the field. Should Yugi have activated his Pot of Greed at the start of his turn, see what he's going to draw it into. Spoilers, it wouldn't have been anything that would have really helped him out. And I understand why he set it face down. It's going to be a nice little trap later. Pop that up, increase your monster attack by 2000. So, mm, I think it was worth a gamble. No misplay here. It's Kaiba's turn and he draws Command Silencer. Since three turns have passed, the effect of Light Force Sword ends, allowing Kaiba to add Obelisk back to his hand. But wait a minute. Shenanigans. Technically, Light Force Sword lasts for four turns. Kaiba is getting Obelisk back 
a turn early. No idea why they changed the effect of this card. It's a bit of a weird thing, because if you actually look at the Japanese version of this card, even if you can't read Japanese, you can see the number four right there. So it was a weird thing for them to change. Anyway, due to Battle City rules, fusion monsters used for tribute summons are worth the amount of materials they are made up of. So Kaiba is able to summon his Obelisk the Tormentor by only sacrificing his XYZ cannon. As it is summoned though, Slifer's effect activates. This reduces its attack by 2000. Kaiba, not willing to crash into Slifer, decides to set Power Balance and Command Silencer face down and ends his turn. For the fact, the dub shows the wrong cards face down here. If we look at the Japanese, it's, it's the right cards. On Kaiba's end phase, the effect of Slifer disappears, since God cards can only be affected by effects for one turn. This is the last time I'll mention it, but had Kaiba set Life Shaver and Power Balance the previous turn, he could have made Yugi discard one card here with Power Balance and then attack with Obelisk. Yugi would have used Pot of Greed to boost his monster's attack, but then Kaiba could have used Life Shaver to make him discard two cards, putting Slifer's attack at 1000. Slifer would be destroyed, and Kaiba, most likely, would have won the following turn. I'm noticing a little bit of a trend with Kaiba here. Probably should talk about that at the end. It's Yugi's turn, and he draws Chain Destruction. Slifer's attack increases. Yugi activates his face down Pot of Greed and draws two new cards. He gets Card Destruction and Disgraceful Charity. Yugi attempts to attack with Slifer, however Kaiba activates his Command Silencer to negate a declaration of an attack. He is also able to draw one new card. He gets Kaiser Seahorse. Yugi sets Card Destruction and Disgraceful Charity face down and ends his turn. It's Kaiba's turn and he draws Blade Knight. Yugi immediately activates his Card Destruction. This forces both players to discard their entire hands and draw the same amount. Yugi discards Collected Power, Magical Hats, and Chain Destruction. He then draws three new cards, which are Karibo, Spell Textbook, and Electromagnetic Turtle. Kaiba discards his Life Shaver, Kaiser Seahorse, and Blade Knight. He then draws Sword of Soul, First for Compensation, and Card Guard. Yugi then plays his Disgraceful Charity. This allows both players to add all the cards they just discarded back to their hands. Both players now have six cards each in their hands. Kaiba activates his First for Compensation. Since Yugi added a card to his hand, Kaiba can special summon two level four monsters from his hand in face of defense. Kaiba summons Blade Knight and Sword of Soul. As they are summoned, Slifer's effect attempts to activate. However, Kaiba plays his quick play Card Guard, and by discarding Kaiser Seahorse, Kaiba's monsters are unable to be destroyed by battle or card effects this turn. Kaiba attempts to go for game by activating his Obelisk's effect. By tributing two monsters, he can deal 4,000 damage to every monster on the opponent's field, and then inflict 4,000 damage to the opponent. Since Slifer has over 4,000 attack points, it is not destroyed. However, the direct damage is still incoming. Luckily, Yugi discards Karibo to reduce the damage to zero. Kaiba sets Life Shaver face down and ends his turn. Had Yugi not jumped the gun and used card destruction at the start of Kaiba's turn, he could have done this in the battle phase. When Obelisk attacks, Yugi does his card destruction disgraceful charity combo. Kaiba wouldn't have been able to do a thing about it. And how would the turn be different? Well, Obelisk would be destroyed, Kaiba would take 2000 damage, and now Kaiba would be on the back foot. Misplay Yugi. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Necromancy. Yugi immediately enters his battle phase and attacks Obelisk. However, Kaiba activates Power Balance. This forces Yugi to discard half the cards in his hand and then Kaiba draws the amount discarded. Yugi, holding six cards, discards Collected Power, Electromagnetic Turtle, and Chain Destruction. Slifer's attack is reduced to 3000. Kaiba then draws three cards, two copies of Blue Eyes White Dragon and Polymerization. Before Slifer can be destroyed by battle, Yugi plays Necromancy, which I'd like to point out isn't a quick play spell, and thus means Yugi activating it here is actually an illegal move. So shenanigans again. Regardless anyway, Necromancy's effect is four random monsters from Kaiba's graveyard get special summoned to the field in defense. However, every time one is destroyed, all other monsters Kaiba has will lose 600 attack. As they are summoned, Slifer's effect kicks in, reducing all of their defenses by 2,000 and thus destroying all four. This, in turn, weakens Obelisk by 2,400 attack. Yugi now has the upper hand. However, Kaiba reveals that his Sword of Soul has the effect that when it is destroyed, it can increase the attack of a monster on the field by 1,000. Now, Kaiba has the upper hand. However, Yugi reveals his Electromagnetic Turtle's effect in the grave. 
once while it's in there, he can end the battle phase immediately. He does this and sets spell textbook face down and ends his turn. As he does, Obelisk's attack returns to normal. It's Kyber's turn and he draws final attack orders. Kyber immediately enters his battle phase and attacks. Yugi activates spell textbook. Now, by discarding all of the cards in his hand, which is only magical hats, he can draw one card. And if it is a spell, he can activate it immediately. Yugi draws, and what else does he get but the ultimate spell card, Card of Sanctity. It is activated straight away, allowing both players to draw until they have six cards in their hand. Yugi draws six, which are Dark Magician, Magic Formula, Spellbinding Circle, Magician Selection, Red Eyes Black Dragon, and a mysterious card that is never actually shown, and it's about to get discarded, so it doesn't really matter. So. Let's just say it's Guy of the First Knight. Kyber only draws two cards. He gets Card of Demise and Cloning. With 6,000 attack, it looks as if Obelisk is about to be destroyed. However, Kyber activates Life Shaper. Since it's been set for two turns, Yugi discards two cards. He sends Dark Magician and Guy of the First Knight to the grave. Now, since both monsters have 4,000 attack, both are destroyed in the battle. Kyber ends his turn by setting Cloning face down. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Gazelle, the King of Mythical Beasts. He summons it into defense. However, as he does, Kyber activates Cloning to summon a clone token of Gazelle to his side of the field. Yugi ends by setting Magic Formula face down. It's back to Kyber and he draws Cost Down. He activates it to lower the level of one Blue Eyes in his hand by two. Now a level six, he sacrifices Gazelle to summon Blue Eyes to the field. He uses it to attack and destroy Yugi's Gazelle. Kaiba ends his turn. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Monster Reborn. He activates it to special summon the Dark Magician he discarded three turns ago. Yugi sets Spellbinding Circle face down and ends his turn. It's Kaiba's turn and he draws Magical Trick Mirror. He sets it straight away to reduce the amount of cards in his hand. Then he plays Card of Demise to allow him to draw cards until he has five. However, after five turns, he must discard his entire hand. Don't worry, the duel will end before that fifth turn ever happens. Since he has three cards in hand, Blue Eyes, White Dragon, Polymerization, and Final Attack orders, he is only able to draw two cards. He gets a third Blue Eyes, White Dragon, and Lord of D. Kyber summons Lord of D in attack and then he ends his turn. Why didn't Kyber attack over Dark Magician with Blue Eyes? Well, to be fair, he's playing cautiously and he's right to be so. Kyber deduced with his past knowledge of Yugi's deck that his face down cards would be an attack boosting ability for Dark Magician and a card that would hinder his monster. By summoning Lord of D, however, he has prevented his dragon from being targeted by the detrimental effect. However, he knows if he attacks into Dark Magician, he will most likely boost the monster and will most likely lose his own. So that's fine. What's not not fine though is the fact that he's got polymerization in his hand. If he used polymerization here, he could make his Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. He can attack into Dark Magician and inflict 1500 damage. Even if Yugi used his face down, it wouldn't have helped him. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Beta the Magnet Warrior. He summons it in defense and then uses Dark Magician to attack Lord of D. Since one of his monsters is being attacked, Kyber is able to activate his magical trick Mirror. With its effect, he can activate one spell from Yugi's grave immediately. He chooses Monster Reborn and brings back Obelisk the Tormentor into defense. Due to Egyptian God Card's anime effect, when they are summoned to the field in defense during the declaration of an attack, that monster attacking is now forced to attack it instead. Dark Magician collides with Obelisk, costing Yugi 1500 life points. Yugi sets Magician's selection face down and ends his turn. As he does, Obelisk returns to the grave. It's Kyber's turn and he draws the Flute of Summoning Dragon. He switches Lord of D into defense and then activates the Flute of Summoning Dragon. Due to its anime effect, both players can now special summon up to two dragon monsters in their hands to the field. Kyber summons his two Blue Eyes White Dragon, while Yugi summons to Kyber's surprise, Joey's Red Eyes Black Dragon. Kyber enters his battle phase. The first Blue Eyes attacks Dark Magician, However, Yugi activates Magician's Selection to negate the attack and destroy the weakest monster on Kyber's side of the field, which is Lord of D. The second Blue Eyes attacks and destroys Bait the Magnet Warrior, and the final one attacks Red Eyes. However, now since Lord of D is no longer protecting dragons from being targeted by card effects, Yugi plays his Spellbinding Circle to reduce the attack of Blue Eyes by 700. Yugi chooses not to negate the attack, and so Red Eyes destroys the weakened Blue Eyes. Kyber ends by setting polymerization and final attack orders face down. It's Yugi's turn and he draws double spell. He sets it face down and then switches red eyes into defense. 
However, Kyber plays Final Attack Orders, which forces all monsters into attack position and makes them unable to change their positions. And not only that, both players now pick three cards from their decks. They keep those cards while sending all other cards to the grave. The cards chosen are then put back into the deck in whatever order the owner chooses. Yugi picks Defusion, Diffusion Wave Motion, and a final card that will never be drawn. Kyber picks Monster Reborn, Absorb Spell, and also a final card that will never be drawn. Let me know in the comments, what do you think Kyber and Yugi picked for their final cards? Let me know. It's Kyber's turn and he draws Monster Reborn. He activates it, bringing back his destroyed Blue Eyes White Dragon. He then activates his face down polymerization to fuse all three together to make Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Yugi responds by activating his face down double spell. With it, Yugi can activate all spell cards Kyber just used. Yugi first uses Monster Reborn to special summon Buster Blader. This card was sent to the grave when his deck got wiped. Next, he activates Polymerization. He merges Dark Magician and Buster Blader together to make Dark Paladin. Due to Dark Paladin's effect, it gains 500 attack for each dragon monster on the field. With Red Eyes and Blue Eyes on the field, its attack increases to 3,900. Kyber, unable to attack due to Battle City fusion rules, I guess, is forced to end his turn. And here is where I reveal the disappointing truth about this turn. Had Kyber simply brought back his Obelisk the Tormentor, he could have sacrificed his two Blue Eyes White Dragons and won the duel by inflicting 4,000 damage that Yugi would have been completely unable to stop. Huge misplay, Kyber. You could have won right here. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Defusion. He sets it face down and ends his turn. It's Kyber's turn and the penultimate turn of the duel. He draws and gets Absorb Spell. Some weird stuff happens here, but follow me. Kyber attacks. However, who he attacks is never actually stated or shown. It's assumed Red Eyes because that way he can deal enough damage to win. However, this is contradicted by the fact that when Kyber attacks, Yugi activates Magic Formula to boost Dark Paladin's attack by 500. So maybe he was trying to destroy Dark Paladin, but he wouldn't have won, so that's a bit weird. Plus, why did Yugi use Magic Formula? It's going to give Dark Paladin 4,400 attack, that's not enough to get over Blue Eyes, so pointless. But it doesn't matter anyway, because Kyber activates his Absorb spell, which sucks up the attack boost to his monster instead. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon now has 5,000 attack. But that doesn't matter. None of that play just mattered, because Yugi's just gonna use Defusion right now and split up Blue Eyes into the three separate monsters. Now, since there are four dragons on the field, Dark Paladin's attack increases to 4,900. Kyber, unable to win, ends his turn. Now it's Yugi's turn, and the final turn of the duel. He draws and gets Diffusion Wave Motion. Yugi, more than capable of winning by simply just attacking into Blue Eyes, decides instead to flex. He pays 1,000 life points to use Diffusion Wave Motion. Now Dark Paladin can attack every monster on Kyber's side of the field. Yugi attacks all three Blue Eyes with Dark Paladin. Yugi wins the duel. So, I feel like I've said everything I need to say throughout this duel, but this duel was a victim of, you can definitely tell that the plot is dictating people's actions. Kyber absolutely got shafted in this duel. Don't get me wrong, I love this duel to bits, and of course, every single duel, plot is gonna dictate how plays get done, and we wanna see spectacle, don't we? So, that's fine. The only reason why analyzing this duel has annoyed me a little bit is because it's very, very blatant. It's not been hidden, it's not been like ambiguous, it's just Kyber's been forced to make bad plays so that Yugi could win. It is still a really good duel, and if you would like to see a more fair duel, if you will, then check out the Dark Side of Dimensions duel. But yeah, thank you all for watching, catch you later.